Welcome to The Lex Factor, a lawfully good podcast where we'll brief you on the business of law so you can build a better practice and capture more billable hours. Hey, everybody. Welcome to another episode of The Lex Factor. It's your host, Lauren, here. Hi, and I'm Brad Pobble, the co-host. Oh, I yeah. labeled myself the co-host. <laughs> Finally. He didn't want to accept the co-host status, but he is he is co-host, in fact. I feel like, you know, it. we're all equal. Yeah, we so, are. Everybody. Everybody right. is equal in this room. So um, we have a really special guest today. We have Kati Gashtabi with Purist Consulting. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you so much for joining us today. Kati, can you tell us just a little bit about yourself before we get started? Sure. Well, that's a loaded question. I teach <laughs> that. So just a little bit about myself is what I tell people to talk about all the time. So I'll give you my, I'll give you my story, which is what we teach lawyers to do about themselves. And Fantastic. The story has very little to do with work. So um, I'm an immigrant. Up to about six months ago, I thought I was an immigrant, but really I'm a refugee. When my book editor, I'm working on my third book, said, you do know you're a refugee, not an immigrant. <laughs> so we apparently are refugees. We left Iran in 1979 during the revolution, and we um, – packed two suitcases thinking we were leaving for two weeks until the unrest died down because right. we're of not, not of that religion. Mm -hmm. And then we never went back. So I got to grow up in the Midwest. I grew up in, the, in Indiana and I had a fantastic Midwestern upbringing and I always wanted to save the world by becoming a lawyer. And this <laughs> is where all my audiences laugh when I give them permission because we all know, um, it's really not the way to save the world, but it's a noble profession. So I got to do that for many years, put myself through law school. I was a um, securities lawyer on Capitol Hill. I was a federal lobbyist at first, and then I went to this U.S. Securities and Exchange Commission. I was there when Enron blew up. And as I was going through my financial services legal career, I started becoming more and more jaded with financial services. Like mm -hmm. I actually knew Bernie Madoff, and my husband's mm -hmm. always like, don't. <laughs> don't don't even relate to them no right but but that's the irony of it like we were a very small group of regulators and regulated and we uh -huh. all knew each other so yeah. i was really like startled when this happened so from the sec i went to a major law firm in their dc office and it was there where people just started all the lawyers started asking me for advice how did you get that job how did you get promoted how did you get that career and I was always giving what I call branding advice on the run. I would take them to lunch because I was so busy. And I'm like, here, okay, here, do this, say this, wear this, whatever, and see what happens. And then I'll take you back out to lunch and we'll clean it up if it doesn't work. And so I didn't realize I was giving branding advice. And then I moved here to Southern California and I went in-house and that was my last legal job. And that's where I stopped practicing law. Uh, it was a day where I had spent 15 hours, you guys, putting together a very small piece of a mutual fund prospectus. And that's all you need to know about that. <laughs> I went home at nine o'clock at night to my very beautiful, lovely home on the beach all by myself. <sighs> And I opened my own mailbox and there just so happened to be my own prospectus. And I reflexively threw it away because no one reads that stuff. Oh. And that was Aww. my aha moment standing in the dark that, oh my God, what if what I do for a living has no meaning or merit? And it was a very personal decision. I, bet. I quit the practice of law two years before the recession. Yeah, mm -hmm. Brad, it was. But I don't want other lawyers to do it. And that's where I had my aha and I turned it into my second career. I worked with an ex-Harvard litigator, figured out my natural talent, and now it's part and parcel with what I teach that uh, we all have something we're naturally good at, and we all have a brand as people, as human beings, as lawyers, mm -hmm. and if we evolve that and know that and be able to package it up right and communicate it to the right audience, then we can have a life that's full of ease and a career that's really prominent and we're seen and heard and um, make a difference and be good lawyers. That is quite the yeah, story. That's amazing. Wow. I feel like we should just cancel this episode and I want to hear more and more about <laughs> I know, you. I want to hear. First, let's go back to the first career right. and talk about, wow. So it's so funny because when I first started sharing my story, people, I'm a professional public speaker too, right? They hire me to speak. People would say, can we just hire you to share your story? And I'd be like, my story? <laughs> They're like, yeah. I'm like, wow, there is real power in people's stories. And I would say the same thing my clients say. Lawyers say to me all the time. 
I, I don't, there's nothing special about me. You can't develop a brand out of me. I'm like, yes, there is. You think it's not special, mm-hmm. but people are fascinated. We just need you to own it better and then be able to communicate it. That's why when I go first and people say this, ask me this question, I fully share my story because mm-hmm. it's not just my story, you guys. It's every lawyer's got a great story. and We just got to be able to polish it and own it and unearth it. Yeah. And I think it's so important. It's one of those things that people maybe overlook. And especially in the legal industry, think of the clients that you're serving. You know, they could be coming to you at a time of need and they want to feel that they can relate to you, that you're personable and you're truly there to help them and to help them with whatever their case is. So to have that that self-branding and that self-awareness, it goes a lot further than I think people realize a lot of the times. Oh, Lauren, so well said. I mean, people don't, and look, I don't blame lawyers, right? I don't blame any professionals because we're not taught this in school. My husband is a dentist. When I first started doing this, <laughs> I realized through working with that ex-Harvard litigator that this was my natural talent. Like Mm -hmm. I'm a really good marketer because I understand the essence of people who people are and I draw it out and I'm their biggest cheerleader because most people say to me, look, I'm not self-confident around this stuff. I can't brag. I don't know how to brag. I'm like, no, we're just looking for healthy self-promotion. But we're not taught that in law school, right? And so unfair to then say, this is how you get clients. But the end of the day, it's what Lauren said. It's about really just relating to people and connecting to them. But we're so busy doing the substantive work. It's like there's no time for relatability. Uh, exactly. Relatability, exactly. Right? I really, attorneys are busy. Yeah. I really like your message, you know, especially you talk about attorneys and you talk about, you know, they didn't learn about how to polish that and how to, you know, really sell themselves in school. And uh, frankly, I believe you really aren't taught that throughout any of your education. No. So it's... Yeah. Yeah, it's yeah. it's something that uh, it's especially nowadays with stereotypes, mm-hmm. everything that's going on in the world, you have to find you and be okay with that. And that's kind of what I feel like your message is. Uh, it it's Yes. Well said, Brad. It really is. And that's honestly why this process I tell lawyers I'm like, look, if you're not willing to go there, I make it as easy as possible. We have a lot of fun. I have people bump up against their comfort zone, but I say save yourself time and money. If you're not even willing to look at yourself, then don't. It's okay. It's a spectrum, right? Where mm-hmm. Some of us are here, some of us are here. But I always tell all my clients, I I have such respect for all my clients because they're courageous and they're willing to Mm -hmm. at least look at it. And yes, it's exactly what you said, Brad. Who are you? And that makes everybody uncomfortable. But here's what I say. If you're not uncomfortable, then you're not growing and you're not changing and your practice of law is not evolving. And don't expect clients. Don't Mm -hmm. expect to grow because discomfort is what allows you to grow. And Mm -hmm. then lawyers go, oh my gosh, are you kidding me? (laughs) You're always within your comfort zone, then what is different and what is new? Right? Right. Exactly. That's right on. And now more than ever, you have to find a way to really stand out in the crowd. Life is crazy. Business world is crazy. The industry is crazy. You have to do something new to get right. your name out there. So let, let's talk a little bit more about the benefits of branding. I mean, I think it's pretty clear just from everything that you said, but putting ourselves in the shoes of an attorney or an actual law firm, what are some of the benefits that they could come across when they work on defining their own brands? Yeah, excellent question. So the biggest, hugest one is that you sell yourself with a lot more ease. Mm -hmm. And so your revenues just go up because it's easy. And people are like, could this be easy? Could selling be easy? I'm like, yeah, absolutely. Because you know, simple does not always make easy, but simply knowing who you are makes it easy. Second really big benefit is that your stress goes down and then that allows you to sell better. And that's based on my formal research that I did at UCLA a decade ago with a neuroscientist to prove my theories because I'm very left brain linear too. And that is that as your stress goes up, there's a direct inverse correlation with your self-confidence. Stress Mm -hmm. is going up, your self-confidence proportionally drops which means that you're not resonating with your audience. Your brand value has diminished to a point where they're just not buying what you're selling. Whether you want to date or you want to grow your firm brand or you know, hire a new associate, no one is attracted to you. You're not resonating. Mm-hmm. So lowering that stress level is tremendously important to my program, and that's a huge boon. The other benefit is creativity goes up tremendously for lawyers. And creativity is about problem solving for your clients, right? And seeing alternative solutions and doing it 
cheaper, faster, better, more effectively, right, all around and having happier clients, which leads to more referrals. So creativity is like lost on us lawyers because we're always trapped in our left linear brain producing results, A plus B equals C. That's what they teach us in law school. That's what makes us good lawyers. But we're not using the other half of our brain to put it bluntly, right? And so we're making things a lot more difficult on ourselves. And that's what I was talking about the first benefit. So those are the top three benefits of doing this work. I can definitely see that. Uh, so uh, in another life, other than co-hosting, uh, I'm, <laughs> there is nothing else, Brad. <laughs> there this is, is it. nothing else. This is it. I'm a CIO yeah, yeah. and uh, deal a lot with technology, and I have the same thing from a technology. I always want to hire more of the creative people because they can uh-huh. actually solve issues and think yeah. outside of the box instead of your very technical ones and zeros types of persons. Mm-hmm. So yeah. I can definitely see that. Yeah, and all of that then leads to happiness, right? And which sounds so Pollyanna, but (laughs) I am so far from Pollyanna. I'm very pragmatic. (laughs) And I did hear Pollyanna died a very happy woman. But the (laughs) point is that when you do all that, then you're just happier in your life and you're going to attract better clients and people Mm -hmm. that, that refer you because you show up at some level happier than them. And we all should know the statistics. 78% of everything you and I buy is not based on content. People are not buying you as a legal service provider. They're buying whether you make them happier because they're how you make them feel. Mm -hmm. feel. And then you in turn, you're going to, you're going to produce better work because Mm -hmm. you're happy, you're excited, you're engaged. Right. It's very much like perception based marketing. You want, you want to give off the perception and of who you are Mm -hmm. and really own that and market it. Yeah, you said it very well, Brad. Yeah, it is perception based marketing, but Mm -hmm. it's based on an authentic you. Right, which is even more powerful. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's everything. Authentic brands win. Yeah, Yeah, absolutely. So uh, similar to that, you said earlier, you kind of help them find who who they are. So you come in, you polish it up, right? You polish them up, make them shine, make them. Is it difficult steps that they have to take? To polish, and then once they're all polished up, ready to do that, is it hard for them to maintain? Oh, beautiful. No, it's not difficult at all. So it's really about unearthing their unique and relevant attributes. That's the first part of the definition of the personal brand. So what's unique and relevant? It's got to be unique and it's got to be relevant, your attributes. So it's unearthing. It's already there. Mm -hmm. And most people, by the time they come to me, they're like dying to let it out, right? (laughs) They want to find their authentic self and they want to be able to express themselves authentically in any profession. And maintenance then is literally about just staying the course. So the Mm -hmm. biggest part of all my work is self-awareness. Are you aware of what people are saying now, what the feedback is, how it's landing? Because we're not going to recreate the wheel. I'm too pragmatic. And uncovering who you are, it's all there. You just got to be willing to look at it and have fun with it. And there's steps in my process. I'm very pragmatic. So, you know, whether you work one-on-one with me or whether you go through my lawyer's branding boot camp, which we've had thousands of lawyers go through, Mm -hmm. it's a step-by-step process. The first step is natural talent you know, your brand expression, your story, your visual, then we go into your audience and how you communicate who you are now with your audience and reading your audience, the communication element so important and then negotiation. You know, I had a lawyer just the other day in boot camp say, hey, I took the negotiating class from last time. I had co-counsel or opposing counsel who never responded. I used the language <laughs> you said, and I used the empathy tools, KT. And this man who's never responded to me responded immediately and said, I, I, you so get me. Here's everything you want. <laughs> That's so amazing. It's like magic, right? <laughs> so we go down the checklist and we have you learn it and apply it. And then maintenance becomes you being committed to the time and the money you invested really to just keep evolving. Because once you get it, you're like what that guy said, this is easy. Yeah, I you can got do it. This. And you kind of like keep drinking the Kool-Aid. You know, <laughs> right? So does it ever get to be too much? You know, especially you work with firms all the time. Say you're working with a firm of 10 or 20 attorneys and they're all they're all working towards this goal and this new self-awareness and this new branding. Does it ever get to be too much and too detrimental for the firm or for the attorney themselves? I could never say it becomes too much. <laughs> what's too much or too detrimental? Being having an easy Being career you, yeah. and attracting clients more naturally to you and getting them to refer you business and sleeping earlier and and billing more efficiently and having more fun (laughs) and bringing your personality into it and like really having a reason and an ethos. Oh, and Uh by the way, 
it also helps get rid of those lawyers where they really don't belong there, but they can't figure it out. And the law law firm doesn't want to fire them because, you know, there's all sorts of implications legal and not to that. So then you have the right people in place too, doing the right work. So never, it it, it only makes things better for sure. And I guess I'm very, um, you know, that's my perspective is <laughs> what I do, but that's my perspective after 12 yeah. years and thousands of lawyers. No, so. it makes sense. It'd be great. You know, it's an amazing to work in a place that has such a strong culture and that allows that awareness of, of your self brand and your self promotion and the promotion of the firm itself. So it kind of you naturally weed those people out who maybe it's not they're bad at their job or whatnot, but maybe it's just they're not the right fit. And you end up with a group of people who just it's like a well oiled machine. Right. You know, you have the right group Absolutely. there. You have the right talent. And then they can implement tools, technology tools. Your Mm -hmm. product gets implemented so much better because oftentimes I get hired by companies like yours because people say, and that is not foreshadowing, I'm just saying, (laughs) I'm going to go, this technology doesn't work. We've bought it for our law firm and it's a waste. And I'm like, it's not the technology, it's the people. Right. So mm-hmm. part of my process is adapt and adopt. If you cannot adapt to changes like technology, you cannot adopt anything new and yeah. change and grow the firm. So I go in, I'm like, let's develop the brand because then you can adopt this technology and you can make it work and you can grow. So yeah, it's, it's a lot of benefits. You are so right. Yeah. I, I talk, I'm a strong believer in what you just said from a cultural perspective, oh, from yeah. a brand perspective. Most of the tools that are implemented in organizations, you have to have the right culture to take those in and really adapt them to meet their yes. needs. Especially you, when there's change. Right. You know? And if you don't have that, it makes it very difficult to oh, do yeah. it. So it's equally as important to talk about brand and culture when implementing anything as it is the tool. Mm-hmm. Not just when things are toxic, it's when you want to grow and shift and you introduce anything new. You know, somebody said the other day, they lost 40% productivity because oh they gosh. changed their, um, well, I won't tell you the software, <laughs> but just the homepage changed and people went nuts. They're like, we don't know where anything is. We don't know how to access it. And and the company hadn't come in and trained like all mm-hmm. these people, like just by saying the homepage is different, the layout's different, but it all works. Yeah. Well, communication. Wow. Yeah. So as you get this brand, you know, you're, you're working on yourself, you're, you're coming out who you are, uh, definitely from a brand perspective, it's becoming more visible and that translates to the firm brand. How do those two things work together? How do we make sure that they stay cohesive? Yes. Very good question. So the firm brand does not exist without the lawyer's individual brands. Okay. Mm -hmm. So the personal brand of the people is the foundation for the law firm brand. It's likened to a house foundation. You cannot build a house on a fa- faulty foundation. Mm-hmm. So the personal brand is the foundation and the house is the law firm's brand. I do not relate to a sign on the door that says Jones, Smith, and blah, 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 LLP. I don't know what that is. I have no recognition. I cannot relate to that. I can't trust that. I don't feel safe with that. Mm -hmm. Safety and trust is very important. So the people have to each have their individual brains, the lawyers do. And that not only brings in everything we just talked about, but that's stable and that's an intentional plan. And then we can spin off the business brand off of that, the law firm brand off of that. And then the law firm brand is very clearly communicated from a place of these are our people, these are what we do, and this is how we make it great. And so then I can relate to that law firm because I'm relating to the people behind it. No brand exists without the people, which is why we talk about toxicity and whatnot, because if those people aren't in a place and lawyers don't work in a place where there's a good atmosphere and reduced toxicity and a healthy culture, then the business brand cannot thrive. It's very logical, but every law firm wants to ignore it. Why? Because they're like, please don't make me deal with a mushy human people. (laughs) I had one, yes, the other day. She, She was so honest. She said, we hear you're really good at dealing with the emotional stuff. And she said, I just won't touch that stuff. And I'm not gonna lie about it, but you're you got it to go with it. I'm not doing it. So you know? <laughs> That's amazing. So what's really that interaction like when you're working with 14, 15 other attorneys within your same firm, and they're all trying to build their own personal brands as well? How can you support those other people? It's a really beautiful process because here's the deal. 
uh, I can't support another employee or another lawyer if I'm not feeling stable myself. Mm -hmm. So about five years ago, I started getting law firms that would call me and go, hey, we're having the women all leave or the minorities all leave. Could you bring a, uh, a mentorship program and implement it here? And I would say, no, I don't want your money because mentorship will not work right now. And they'd say, what? And I'd say, if I am a lawyer and I am stressed and I am in burnout mode, and you're going to have me mentor somebody else. Now you've added something to my workload and I'm miserable and it won't work because it's not effective, right? I can't mentor somebody when I am burnt out. Mm -hmm. So I will bring you a support structure of branding boot camp where I teach every lawyer their own brand. They unearth it and then they want to support one another mm -hmm. and they want to collaborate with one another because we bring the mentality of differentiation and distinction and support and collaboration where no one is competing anymore internally. Yeah. I remember being in law firm land and it was so competitive. We wanted to oh, yeah. you know, gouge each other's eyeballs out. And maybe I'm making it a little dramatic, but I've seen <laughs> bad and I've seen good in all of this. So, but when every person learns their own brand, then that competitive energy is used well instead of mm -hmm. internally against one it's more another. More collective, and yeah. I want you to succeed, right, Lauren? I want you and Brad to do good because then I benefit as well. Mm -hmm. And that in and of itself then just keeps the ball rolling. Absolutely. Definitely. That's amazing. So I have I have one more question. I'm just most curious about. <laughs> uh -oh. So when you, you know, we're talking about brand, I'm curious on approach. Would you take the approach of talking with me, for example, to define my brand, or do you take the approach of listening to others on how I am being perceived and then work with me to change that to be more like who I am? Do you take that outside perception into account when you're talking to people on how they need to find their true self? Excellent question. Boy, you guys have really done your homework. I'm so I'm so admiring of you both. Um, that is one excellent question. Both. You have both. to. The part of the definition of a personal brand, the first part is what's unique and relevant about you. What are those attributes? Because it's got to be unique and it's got to be relevant. But the last part, and then second part is how do you communicate that those attributes uh, uh, consistently to your audience? Because mm -hmm. consistency is about safety. Mm -hmm. And the third part is What's the audience feedback? If I don't know how it's landing, I can't tweak things, right? I've got to have a baseline, but I got to know how to tweak things, right? And you cannot ignore audience perception because perception is reality, as one of you guys said earlier. And so we don't want to change what's already working because I'm not here to recreate the wheel. I'm here to make life easier and mm -hmm. I'm pragmatic. But we also need a strategic, intentional plan that includes what the audience wants, what's working. And so feedback is critical, constantly getting feedback. I call them data points for my mm -hmm. purposes. Mm -hmm. But th that feedback also boosts um, all the lawyers' self-confidence because they start hearing the good feedback instead of what they perceive as the negative feedback because they never ask. So they always perceive <laughs> it. Yeah, no one wants to hear the negative feedback. <laughs> We're right. humans, but um, this has been amazing. I feel like I've learned so much today. And like Brad and I said earlier, we absolutely love hearing you talk. So um, I'm <laughs> sure we would love to have you back one day. We love to finish our episodes with a couple takeaway points for our listeners. And I think one thing that really resonated today with me is what you just said is don't be afraid to get feedback from others. You know, we're all really critical on ourselves. I have things that I know I can work on. I'm sure Brad and you are the same way. You know, as, as yourself, what you need to work on, but don't be afraid to ask others. You know, you're asking to get help and they're sharing to get help to help you as well. You know, at the end of the day, they're helping you become a better employee, a better worker, a better person, whatever it is. So if, if they can see something that maybe you don't see in yourself or your performance, it's only going to make you better. So I really, I'm really glad that you ended on that last point. I think it's something that everybody can take away. Don't be afraid to run with and, you know, yeah, that self-reflection too uh -huh. is such an important part. It is very difficult for people to do that sometimes. Oh, I is. think it's difficult for me, but it's so important to make you a little bit uncomfortable to allow you to grow, like what you were saying earlier. You have to push that a little bit to learn. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Brad, what about you? What, what would you advise everybody to take home with them today? Take home with them today. Yes. Well, I do think your point, I, I know you touched on it a little bit already, but it is so important to be yourself and own it. Mm -hmm. um, like you were saying earlier, um, or we were talking about, 
it's it helps you in marketing who you are as an individual. You know, like uh, like we had said, when you go into a law office, it's just the name. Mm-hmm. You know, it's who you're interacting with that you're really going to build that relationship with. And you have to present yourself in, in that positive way. And the more that you own it, the more that relationship will grow and gain and that trust will grow and then revenue and everything else will follow. Yeah. So it just all own falls it. into place. Yeah. Got to own it. <laughs> my favorite word, own it. And own air it. quotes, everybody knows. <laughs> <laughs> Very That's good. It. All right. So if anybody listening today wants to learn more, do you have resources you can share with them or anywhere that you can point them? Absolutely. Thanks for asking, Lauren. So uh, on my website, uh, Purist Consulting, www.p like Paul, U R I S like Sam, consulting.com. Mm-hmm. There's a ton of resources. Um, the biggest one that we talked about that people generally like to know is the research summary on stress and self confidence. Mm-hmm. So if they if they want to email me, then I'm happy to share that with them too, but they can find that on the website. It's Katy, K A T Y, at puristconsulting.com. The other one is if you go to the home page, there is a free branding guide, branding made easy. It's three easy steps. I boiled it down to three easy steps that you could do on your own. They can just download that guide and get going. And then since we're coming up on the end of the year, you know, I want every lawyer to avoid burnout coming up on the end of the year because it's mm-hmm. been a tough year, right? It, it has, has been, been quite the year. <laughs> And we want 2021 to be a year that leads them into, uh, you know, success immediately rather than dragging their heels and having to, you know, renew stuff. So I'm doing a seven day challenge in December and every day I give you bits of branding information that you can implement in December to get January going off to a great start because we kind of want to just mm-hmm. get done with 2020. I love that. Yeah. 2021. So <laughs> 2020 never happened. And you get the branding made easy um, download, then you'll also be included in the seven day challenge. That's awesome. I love that. That is great. I'm going to check it out and I'm not even a l- lawyer. A lawyer, a lawyer. I'm not even an attorney. <laughs> Brand is for it, everybody. It, it, it is. is. Human. That's, That's right. It thing. really is, actually. You know, I mean, I work with more than just lawyers. But, oh, yeah. Um, yeah, it's a human endeavor. It yeah. really is. So please do. We can edit this part out. But you also <laughs> said you also said earlier, even if you're going out on a date, or yeah. it'll even help you. I mean, it, it's, it's, it's for everything. Yeah. No, you it have is. no idea how many people are like, can I get a date out of them? I'm like, oh. yes. <laughs> you need to expand your marketing. <laughs> Yeah, you could I'm be like to service everyone. <laughs> that's funny. You could be like Hitch. We could uh, make a sequel. <laughs> I love that movie. Yeah, I, I know. I love, love that movie. movie. I love that movie too. You're just saying that because everybody else said. I could probably make a lot more money. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. Well, thank you again so much for joining us today. Again, um, Brad and I, I think, would love to have you on another show in the future. Absolutely. All right. Thank you, everybody, for tuning into the Lex Factor, and we will catch you next time. Goodbye. Bye. Thanks for tuning in to The Lex Factor. Lexicon takes care of business so you can take care of law. Learn how to build a better practice at lexiconservices.com.